What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Tyler underscore TCG back at again with another get to know your local players videos I have with me. Introduce yourself, sir. Uh, Zach Butler. Yes, and he normally doesn't sound like he's dying all the time. He's just getting over a cold. So how are you today, Zach? Uh, very tired, but we're good. <laughs> all right, so you ready for the questions? Sure. So let me start with the first one. Uh, how long have you been playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, I have been playing <clears throat> since the game's release date back in March of 2002. So just over 20 years. Wow, that's, that's really amazing. And now, what has been your favorite part about playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, I enjoy deck building a lot. So just like the freedom in deck building that Yu-Gi-Oh has versus other card games where you're restricted by a mana system is one of, the favorite thing, one of my favorite things. Also, just like, I feel like there's a lot more self-expression and skill expression available in Yu-Gi-Oh in deck building than in other games, which has always been something I've enjoyed. All right, now, what has been your favorite deck you've played in your time of playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Just one. <laughs> you can uh, name your top three. Okay. So, uh, the Minerva Lightsworn deck. Uh, that's my, one of my favorite decks of all time. Um, Gladiator Beasts, surprisingly. I really enjoyed the deck a lot. And then, uh, hmm. it's like it's really tough because I have so many decks that I've played, but probably Extra Deck Monarchs. That's one of my favorite decks, actually. It's really fun. It's really simplistic in like its baseline. Like the skill floor was really low on it, but the ceiling was spry. So you could do some really complex stuff with it, but you could also just like summon Aether, summon Erebus, and then your opponent was just dead. And that was why I said okay. All right, now what has been your biggest accomplishment playing Yu-Gi-Oh so far? Uh, top 52, the NAWCQ in 2017. All right, and now what are some of your future goals for the game? Uh, future goals, that's tough. Um, because I find myself winding down. I don't travel as much anymore. Um, but probably I would like to stop a YCS at some point. I would love to win an event, obviously. That's the dream. Um, but at this point I focus more on like TCG player content creation and things like that. So that's kind of more my focus than just playing. It's just like bringing stuff for like a newer generation of players in since I've been playing for so long that at this point, like there's not as much left for me to do, which sounds like really like, pretentious, but there's just not a, like, there's just not, like the, the desire to do as much stuff just isn't there, so. Okay, and then uh, the final question. So with the new Ashizu cards coming out in Magnetus Mavens, how do you feel the format will turn itself and what do you think will happen for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh? So I think that similar to most, like most of the time when players see cards like that, they, they tend to overreact. Um, I've been around for like every tier zero format, every single crazy format the game has had. It'll definitely be like a tier favorite format, but I don't think it'll be necessarily like only tier decks. Um, I think that the game has a very good history of course correcting itself. The player base is really good about that as well. So I think that like for this upcoming weekend in Pasadena, for example, it'll definitely be tier element favored. Um, the mirror match for that becomes absurd, but I definitely think that we'll see like more control decks because of everyone trying to, so what'll happen is Tier Limit will become the best deck like hand, head and shoulders above everything else. But then like what happened in Necroz format where everybody knew that Necroz was the most powerful deck, but then you had to deal with the paradox in deck building of building to either beat the mirror match or beat like the random decks that you play against. And if you built to beat those decks, you didn't necessarily have as high of a chance of winning the tournament. But if you built to win the tournament, you had a higher chance of losing to those decks because those decks had like unanswerable outs. And so I think we'll get back to a situation like that where people will build tier limit to beat the mirror match and they'll be focusing on that. And then you'll see like Sprite players and uh, Solandri's players and Exorcist players and things like that. Like they'll do well because they'll be able to play against those decks by specifically metagaming for them. All right, any uh, any final shouts you want to give to anybody or? Uh, check out my YouTube channel. Yep, I will link that down down in the description below. When I inevitably don't upload for a year. <laughs> um, TCG player, check us out. Uh, I write articles constantly. Um, and uh, shout outs to a couple of discords, uh, the big fans. Um, it's a very, it's just, it's my testing group. Uh, they're awesome. Um, the friendship server, um, it's like my closest friends. And then uh, shout out to, T to Tyler, TCG, whatever your stupid name is. All right, thank you very much, Zach. Thank you guys for watching this player interview. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye.